Hey everybody, so I am here once again with Dana. Hi Dana. Hi Steve. Hi everybody. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Batman some more. And actually, as you can tell, oh! I, I've, I've moved to a different, a slightly different location in the house. And uh, Batman is, is over. He's, he, Dana pointed out he's like the devil over my shoulder back here. Um, that's actually a print that I got of the, um, oh, the uh, uh, Marshall Rogers, Steve Englehart Batman. One of my favorite runs from the Detective Comics in the 70s. So, uh, um, but anyway, we're going to talk about Batman today. And this, this is going to be interesting because of the Batman videos we have done, this is the one that we have done the least prep for. And by the least, we mean um, there's no notes. Like pretty much nothing. We're just, we're just winging it. We talked about it. I mean, oh, we yes. discussed this. And then we were like, maybe, maybe this discussion should actually be in the video instead exactly. of like, in just like yakking about it. So we'll, of course, I, we didn't take any notes on what we discussed. So that might not actually make it into the video. <laughs> Who knows? Well, we might end up talking about completely different stuff, but or you no know, cats. <laughs> well, well, you know, I almost said we should try to keep it Batman related, but God, we've gone so far afield on pretty much every Batman video we've done. There are chunks of just whoopsie, com completely unrelated Batman to Batman stuff. But so what we what we want to talk about is um, Batman and Robin, the dynamic duo. Okay, the classic, the, the original hero and sidekick pairing. And uh, yeah. the no? original hero and sidekick pairing in comics. In comics, yes. Yes. I mean, come on, you got Holmes and Watson for like a that's, long time before that. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And actually, that's a great, that, what a great way to introduce, like, sort of one of, one of the, basic reasons why Batman benefits from having Robin because my 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 argument in this video is going to be that Batman needs Robin and that Batman as a character is better with Robin period but one of the reasons that one of the narrative reasons why it's good for Batman to have Robin is for the same reason it was good for Holmes to have Watson which is it's just it's somebody for him to explain things to it's it's an interlocutor to use a fancy term for it. And of course, you know, Holmes and Watson, of course, brings up, um, you know, the, the response, which is, is one of my favorite authors ever is Agatha Christie. Yeah. And uh, so of course you've got Poirot and Hastings and uh, slightly similar dynamic. Cause of course they're, they're inspired by Holmes and Watson, but it's also her kind of poking just a little bit of fun at Holmes and Watson. Um, and she makes this more evident in, um, I'm reading The Secret Adversary, as you know. Yes. And uh, and in one of the later Tommy and Tuppence books, I think it's, I think it's the second one, Partners in Crime, um, they they set up their own detective business. And their their shtick is that they're, they're they have, uh, Tommy puts up a, a wall, a library wall, and he has detective fiction on it. And he says, so we're going to like take a look at a case and decide what type of story it belongs in. And so it's kind of her response to all these other literary mystery writers. And um, she, of course, you know, she references Holmes and Watson, but then she also brings in her own Paro and Hastings. And um, Tuppence demands to be Paro. <laughs> and uh, Tommy says, I think that this case will be known as the triumph of Hastings. And Tuppence retorts, can't be done, my friend. Once the idiot friend, always the idiot friend. Oh. <laughs> I'm just like, I love that, you know, she has, she's willing to just give such a burn yeah. to her own character. Her own character. She, she got tired of, of Paro by the end because she had to write so many Poirot stories, but and because people because people kept demanding them, but yeah, there was still a love there, and so I think you know I think it's done in just w with good humor, and I think, um, you know I think there, there's a similar a similar vibe to anybody who writes the same character for a long time, um, but I think 
that having that secondary character also helps to mitigate writing one character for a long period of time because you get sort of you get more of a shift it's not as tedious i guess so i think robin helps out in that way as well because he is a foil for batman it also it, it, it reduces the drain on the writer yeah and, and like robin the with with holmes and watson right because I, I never i've never read any of the perot stories so but i'm very familiar with holmes and watson and with holmes and watson it was well watson in Watson is always a step or two behind Holmes in terms of the deductions. So Holmes can explain what his thinking is or and how he eight. reached. Yeah, yeah. Although, I mean, in, 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 the, in the original stories, Watson isn't that dumb. Like in some of the movies and the TV shows, they kind of dumb Watson down even more. So he's, it's, he's, he can barely yeah. keep I up mean, with anything. He, he's a but, smart guy. Yeah, in, in, in the original Doyle stories, he's a smart He's a doctor. He's not it, a, no, 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 no. Yeah, but he's a doctor. That's not like the same... Skill well, set. Well, well, no, not the same skill, but he's not, he's not a dumb dumb. Yeah. I mean, he's a smart guy. He's sharp. He's just not a genius. Yeah. He's like not sure on But, but with Batman and Robin, it's not so much that Robin is not as intelligent as Batman. I mean, that is the case, but there's a reason for it. It's because Robin is a kid. So yeah. Robin is behind Batman, not just in terms of his, his intellect or his deductive abilities. He's just, he's a child. Developmentally. Yeah. And, and at, at, in, in terms of um, expertise. Yeah. So you give, so it, that, that creates the justification for why Batman is, you know, using him as the, uh, as the foil, using him as the, the target of the exposition. But there are other reasons other than the narrative expediency that I think Batman benefits from Robin. And, and what are there, Steve? Uh, as, a matter, about them? as a matter of fact, Dana, there are other reasons, I think. Um, one is that Robin, if Robin is there, Robin is an almost inescapable reminder of the underlying inherent silliness of the premise. And I am a big believer at this point in my life, I didn't used to be, when I was like a cynical teenager, I didn't have this view, but I'm a big believer that no matter how seriously you take the character, and, and I think when, when, when we write Batman in our fanfic, we take the character fairly seriously. But, yeah, but uh, the, the, seriously in the sense of showing respect for the character and wanting to be consistent and make it... Um, make the character's humanity believable and the choices seem internally consistent that i mean that's what i mean like when, when we say taking the character ser we're not talking about seriously you know it not in the not in the 90s grimdark sense of oh, you know no. it has to be dark to be serious no it doesn't no it doesn't no matter how seriously you're taking it with something like batman i think it's really important to never lose sight of the inherent essential silliness of it you're telling a story about a guy who dresses up in a Halloween costume and goes out at night and fights crime. And I think we need to keep that in mind as storytellers. And if Robin is there, and especially if it's old school, like 1940s through 1980s, you know, elf boots and short pants Robin. Um, hard to get around the silliness there. It's, it's hard to get around the silliness. You, It's difficult to take But at the same time, seriously. at the same time, that means, I mean, especially especially given how silly that costume is it's hard to get away from that and i would i would say that that costume makes the silliness almost rule the story so that it's hard to tell well, other stories with that um i don't know if i necessarily agree with that i mean i've prove me wrong right <sighs> with, with, with the short pants and elf boots well, which, which they are consistently there and everybody's aware of them and it's not just completely ridiculous. Well, but here's the thing. Those stories exist. I mean, there are, there are in, in the comics, I mean, it's easy to talk, if we're talking in terms of like fanfic where it's, it's all prose, I mean, you know, like you're not constantly being reminded of, the, of that costume unless we are constantly describing it and don't forget, 
he's wearing the elf boots. But but you should see other characters' reactions to it. Well, but here's the thing. But um, if that was his costume and that's how he dresses, after a certain point, that would just be how he dresses. And I think when you look at some of the classic Batman stories from the 70s and earlier in the 80s when the characters started to mature a little bit, before it got to the grim, dark 90s stuff, but when the character was maturing a little bit and they were trying to tell more serious sort of adult-oriented stories, Dick was still Robin and still had that costume. And then after Dick left, Jason became Robin, and Jason had the same costume. So you have the elf boots and short little yellow cape and short pants costume, but... Like, it doesn't prevent me from taking the story uh, A Death in the Family seriously. Like, I'm not reading A Death in the Family going, oh, the costume. You know what I mean? Like, I know, but that's because you ignore the costume. I don't ignore it. I just accept it. Just like I accept, just like I accept, if you watch, uh, if you watch the Christopher Reeve Superman movies for the first time with fresh eyes, his, his Superman costume in that movie looks incredibly silly. He's a grown man in like in in like spandex tights and a cape. There's it's 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 like it's a Halloween costume. It's a really really well made Halloween costume. I watch those movies now and I don't even notice it. I, that's just Superman's costume. That's the way he looks. That's the way he's supposed to look. That's that it has become the costume that I judge all other costumes by because that's just but that's because I accept it. I don't ignore Christopher Reeve's Superman costume. I, I, I have accepted it. I'm like, well, that's how he's supposed to look. That's how he looks. And with Robin, I think it's the same way. You know, if, if, if it's a good enough story and the character is presented in, in a way that you can relate to him and connect to him and care about him, that's just how he looks. You know? So to me, if it's a well-told story, the Elf Boots costume isn't a barrier to, to taking it seriously or, or investing in it. Um, but specifically with that i I disagree with with accepting versus i i I think there's in in the way that you're describing accepting it i think there's a deal of you know fine whatever just just that's just the thing um not in it seeming appropriate that it that it makes sense for the character because let's be honest it doesn't it absolutely doesn't oh no it doesn't you're right but I mean, whereas whereas the the costume choices for Batman make much more sense. Like, there's literally story reasons behind them, and there are story reasons behind you know why Robin wears this, but they make m- much less sense for a transition into you know crime fight because that's not what the costume was. You know, yes, it's a shout out, but um, the redesign works so much better because it it keeps sort of, you know, it's an homage to the, the, the original Robin costume, but it takes the more ridiculous aspects of it and does away with them. One of my petty annoyances with, with the, the, the movies in the post-Christopher Reeve era is that I think the DC movies specifically, because the Marvel movies have not nearly had this problem, but the DC movies have been so self-conscious about the sillier aspects, and they've tried to make the costumes look "quote unquote" cool, and I feel like they've really just over—they've just <clears throat> overthought it, you know. Um, especially with Batman, but with Superman to a certain extent as well. They've done a decent job with Wonder Woman in the Wonder Woman movies. Um, I think Wonder Woman's costume looks pretty good, and it doesn't feel like they're overcompensating for how silly they think it is. But like with Su- Superman's costume, especially in the uh, in, in the Zack Snyder movies where it's like so it's it's so sort of undersaturated and textured and you know and like oh. it's like they think that the opposite of silly is boring I feel like that overcompensation for for something about the character that is that is perceived as silly is also one of the main reasons why we have not ever really gotten a proper Batman and Robin movie because I remember when when Tim Burton made his first Batman movie. I remember reading interviews with him, you know, at at the time, and then when he was doing Batman Returns, where people were like, are you going to do Robin? Is Robin going to be in this? And one of the excuses was, well, Robin's too goofy. Robin's too silly. We can't have Batman with, like, a kid sidekick. That's just silly. But if you do it right, the Mm -hmm. silliness doesn't matter. 
people will buy into it because that's just the way it is. We got Batman and Robin in the, in the Schumacher movies, but he was basically Nightwing when he started. Like he was a young adult when yeah. he became Robin. Um, and those movies aren't very good. So, <gasps> Gasp, I, how could you say such a I thing? Know. Hot, hot take, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin are not good movies. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure that you're going to be eviscerated in the comments for saying something so, you know, socially unacceptable. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but, you know, you could, but you, you could do Robin the kid sidekick and have him start off at age like 12 or 13 or something as Robin and even give him that goofy ass costume. And there's no reason why it couldn't work if it is a, a well-told story. Another reason Robin was created, in addition to giving Batman someone to explain stuff to. Audiences. Was, uh, yeah, give, giving the kids who are reading the book someone to project themselves onto. Here's a thought. Someone who the, the, the creators and um, specifically like the publishers and producers thought was more appropriate for them to project onto. And also, let's not forget. Because parents are, par parents are like writing letters saying, my kids are running around like throwing things and like beating people up and they're playing <laughs> Batman. Like, this is terrible. I mean, you're kind of onto something there. I was, I was gonna, I, I, I was gonna bring that up next. Actually, we forget. We, you know, we talk about how grim Batman got in the '80s and the '90s, <laughs> and, and and he totally did. But in the ninth, in '39, '30s, oh my God, '30s era, Batman just shoot people and yeah he was only like that for a year because he debuted in 39 and then 40 came robin so it wasn't like a, that long of a, of a period but yeah early batman was early a, batman used a gun used a gun broke people's necks dropped people off of roofs he was uh, he was a murderer he was an absolute maniac and when they introduced Robin, it was their way of saying, "All right, we need to rein, we need to rein this in." Dial it back, yeah. a lot. <laughs> like, because I understand wanting to differentiate him from Superman, but this is a little extreme. If he's like straight up dropping people off rooftops and you know letting people, I think in, in one of his first stories, kids are identifying with this. Yeah, he's like letting people burn to death in fires. You know what I mean? And like, there's a there's a scene in one of the, I think it's the first Batman Maybe story. This isn't the most healthy role model for yeah. children the 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 very first batman story the case of the chemical syndicate i'm pretty sure the villain dies in a fire while batman stands there watching i mean that's that's the first batman story ever um and yeah so they bring in robin and now he has he has to be a parent and he also has to be like a leader like a mentor and that and also it it send it sets a different tone you know now yeah. it's now it's not just this this violent vigilante going out beating up you know grotesque deformed criminals. Now it's oh it's fun you know they lightened up the color scheme of his costume. That's when you got the brighter blue in his cape and cowl and everything. And the the tone just shifted to what we more usually associate with Golden Age and then later Silver Age Batman. Um, much more of an adventurous, lighthearted tone. And and Robin was key to that. And even when you tell darker Batman stories, I think having Robin there um, is is very much to the benefit of the story and to the character. Because in addition to giving Batman other roles to play, when you want to get into sort of the deconstructionist takes on the character and and start taking the character a little more seriously and asking sort of underlying questions of you know why why does he do this and and what does it mean that he lives this way and that he does these things and what are the ramifications for the city and for himself the fact that he knowingly brings a child into this world of his a child who has just in the case of dick in the case of the original robin who has just experienced an unthinkable tragedy and is vulnerable and grieving and, and heartbroken and, and crying out for not, not just for, for some kind of order and stability in his life, but also he wants to find the people who killed his parents, you know, and Bruce says, Hey, come here, <laughs> not just come live with me in my mansion and I'll take care of you, but put on this costume, learn some karate, you use your circus yeah, skills. The, 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 most most of the the most of the Robin origin stories 
and 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 you know again depends on which version of the origin you're looking at involve him taking more initiative than than just being it's not handed to him yeah and i don't i don't know that were any of the robins just like here it is i mean they all found their own way in yeah but but bruce let them in i think is 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 the ultimate point like bruce was willing to he didn't like bruce didn't say oh no you can't be a part of this this is too dangerous this isn't appropriate for a young totally person. Totally does. Yeah. Like, repeatedly. But then eventually, but he, he acquiesces. He acquiesces, yes. That, and, I, and I think... and Eventually, he accepts it, just like <laughs> he talked about, with the costume. Yeah, he accepts that child endangerment is just going to be a part of his life. Um, but, but see, but I get that, that it makes Batman a more interesting character. It, it creates a, a moral dilemma or, or puts like a... A, um, a a layer of sort of question of moral ambiguity on Batman, where you have to wonder it, again if you tell the story in this way in in, in a way that invites the audience to ponder these questions because you can totally just do it completely lighthearted adventure strip and just not worry about any of this stuff and just have a good time and that's great and that's fine, but if you want to tell the story in a way that invites the audience to consider these questions. One of the questions that a Batman and Robin story can ask you to contemplate that a solo Batman story can't is, is it ever okay for him to do this? You know, it's bad enough that he's Batman and he's doing this and going out and beating up criminals and taking the law into his own hands and et cetera, et cetera. Is it ever okay for him to, to, to bring a child or, or a, a teenager into this world? So how old do you think um, Dick was when he became robin in the anime i mean we only really see him a little bit older i would say i would say older teen like i'm thinking 16 17 you think you think he was you think he was seven in robin's reckoning you think he was 16 or 17 no robin's reckoning uh was that at the what episode oh 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 oh, oh, you mean you mean how how old was he like in the anime i thought you said how old was he when he became robin both both oh so like in the animated series um eventually later on i think in the second version of the animated series he's in college yeah. but he's robin well before that oh yeah i think in the so an- i'm thinking i'm thinking in the animated series when we first see him as robin he's like 16 17 maybe even older That's before he's in college well no in the animated series i think he's in college from the beginning yeah in the animated series he's in college from the beginning so i think in the, in the animated series he's probably at least 18 or 19 when we start are you well then he's still he does- robin well, then he's in college for a long time, and maybe that's because he's Robin and he's not doing so well in his classes. But <laughs> I'm just saying, do we see him become Robin in Robin's Reckoning? No. no. He's not. Okay, when, when he's like, with the death of his parents, he's really young. He's really freaking you think, young. You think younger than 12? Yes. Oh, God, yes. Like, he strikes me as like eight. Wow, I wouldn't say it was that young, but I mean, you look you look at the the shape of his face and the the ratio of head to body. He is he is a like not he's not an adolescent. He is not an adolescent. So either Batman is the teacher. So either Batman puts him through five or six years of training, or he started out with a seven or eight year old Robin, and he's just no 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 like like other option like you know he keeps him in the dark for years for years. For years, that that's that's what I think happened for animated series. He he tried to he he tried not to have him as Robin, like he didn't want a Robin. And finally, it was like, all right, Jesus, you can be Robin. No, he's like been sneaking around, and eventually he gets caught. But doesn't Dick find out in Robin's Reckoning? Not very sneaky. But doesn't Dick find out in Robin's Reckoning? It's been a while since I watched it. Doesn't he discover that Bruce is Batman in that episode? Like in, in the flashback, in the and you know in the in the origin story bit, I think he does, doesn't? He? I Maybe. can't, I, I can't, know. I can't bring that up in my mind. Yeah. But one of the other things we keep we, we talked about costumes for Superman and Wonder Woman. Yeah. And of course, Wonder Woman was later, but Superman doesn't have a sidekick. No, he doesn't. And well, unless and you count Jimmy that, Olsen, we talked about the necessity of or or the the narrative. Uh, assistance of having someone to explain things to and i think that makes more that makes more sense in a procedural like you know the the detective you know world's greatest detective type thing um 
And Superman doesn't have that. And additionally, Superman is not as dark of a character, so he doesn't benefit from having a foil to um, to sort of play off of um, as much as Batman does. And likewise, you know, the whole idea of Robin sort of not just not just externally within the frame of the narrative, but like in universe, you know, the character makes different choices than he would if Robin not only was not present, but did not exist. We talked um, just when we were, we were chit-chatting about it, about um, Mad Love yeah. and the fact that Robin exists in that universe and that even though he's not in that story, his existence shapes the story because it shapes the character and shapes some of Batman's choices um, and, and just sort of the way Batman sees himself just by the fact that he exists, even if he's not in that story. And so I wanted to sort of take a look at, you know, the difference between Batman and Superman in that regard. Because Superman typically does not, I mean, sometimes he works with partners, but, you know, usually does not have a sidekick. Yeah, well, and um, I feel like, and again, it's all it's all down to interpretation and, and how a character is written. But Superman, to me, has always struck me. As an <laughs> has always struck me as an essentially solitary character, you know, because well, which is really interesting because like Batman is like I mean, come on, Batman's a solitary character. Oh yeah, well, but 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 see, I may, and maybe it's sort of maybe the reason why I think of them that way is because that's just the way they've been written, and you know, Batman. I mean, they they both Superman and Batman have very large, very wonderful supporting casts of characters. But Superman's supporting cast is almost all non-superhero people, whereas Batman's supporting cast is has, also all non-superhero. Well, well, but he also has the family. He also has the Bat family. Yeah, you know, so he has. But they're not superheroes. Well, no, they're okay. They're, well, now we're hair splitting on what is a superhero. They are. They are costumed. Uh... They're, they're yeah. They are costumed adventurers. But. Uh, you know, so but with Superman, it's Lois and Perry and Jimmy and his parents, and um, and and with Superman, his his the way that he is solitary is different from the way that Batman is solitary. You know, being you know he is he is an outsider. Yes, exactly. Whereas Batman is, I mean, he is part of Gotham. He is an insider, and yet he is um, alone because of what he does, because of the role that he has taken. Right, right, right. Superman is Superman is because of his abilities and because of his, the fact that he's an alien and because of the nature of his secret identity and the fact that he's pretending to be a normal person and he's not. He's sort of always essentially separated from everybody else. Yeah. Whereas Batman, I like, Bruce, yeah, you know, Bruce Wayne is a normal Batman, person. Batman, Superman could never not be Superman. Like exactly. literally, it's not possible. Exactly. But Batman could not be Batman. Yeah. So so I do think that Superman it's not just that Superman doesn't need a sidekick. Superman would probably actually be one of those characters that would be less interesting with mm -hmm. with a, if he I mean there, like you said there are story there are great stories where he teams up with people um, or or where he is given sort of a mentor role from time to time. But if that were how he was written all the time, I think for me personally, it would probably be less interesting. Whereas yeah. with Batman, and part of the reason is because Batman at first blush is is not the character you would expect to take on a mentor role or to be the leader of this group, of this, of this team. You wouldn't think Batman would be that guy because he's so grim and gruff and solitary and self-contained. Um, and then you bring that out of him with Robin and Nightwing and Batgirl and, and the rest of the, the, the Bat family. Um, and place him in that role of leadership and sort of like the father figure that it, it, it takes him in, a, in a, a, a more interesting direction that you don't necessarily expect when you first encounter the character, mm -hmm. um, which I think which which I think is good for Batman. I want to talk about before uh, uh, before we before we wrap this up, um, because I feel like we've, we've talked a lot about like, you know, why Batman is better with Robin or the various sort of uh, roles in Batman stories that Robin can play. What about, there have been, I believe at last count, there have been about 86 million different Robins mm -hmm. in the stories Roughly. throughout the years. Roughly, that's an estimate. 
I feel like we both would have the same answer here, but I want to ask you and just let us explore it a little bit. Of all the various Robins, who is your favorite Robin? Oh, that's easy. Jason Todd. <laughs> no. Everybody loves Jason. Everybody loves Jason Todd. Well, y'all already, well, if, you, if you've listened to our, our fanfic, uh, you know it ain't Damien. You know, we, they, you know your least favorite. <laughs> Oh, just, I just, yeah, the existence of Damian Wayne is just like insult. As, as, as we've talked about before. And again, as someone who loves, loves Robin, loves the idea of Robin, I do feel like the writers of the Batman comics over the last 15 or 20 years have gotten just, they've gotten Robin happy. It's like, you don't need to keep that 15 or 20 years. I mean, that's like. Third? Well, maybe I don't know because we because you know Tim was Robin for a long time, mm-hmm. and it and that was and that was the the stability of yeah. the Tim as Robin years. Like I love Tim. Tim, if we're if we're talking about just specifically as Robin, Tim is my favorite Robin. Dick is my favorite overall character, mm-hmm. but as specifically as Robin, Tim is my favorite Robin, and and he was Robin for a long time, and then they said, well, let's let's take Steph. And, ma- and take her from spoiler and make her Robin. And that was like for a, a particular story that they were telling. I don't think there was ever an intention to leave her as Robin long term. Of course not. Because they had to, you know. Um, no, 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 no. Because they chose to. Didn't have to. They didn't have to. You're right. No, you're right. And, and no, there, there was, oh gosh. Steph deserved so much better. It's just absolute. Oh, I agree. She's a fantastic character and bad yeah. storytelling. She's a fantastic character, but yeah. Also, so the spoiler costume is better than any of the other stuff that they came up with. That spoiler costume rocks. I yeah, spoilers. Spoilers costume is awesome. I don't know why, but so you know they had a, they had a great Robin with Tim. And like like were, Jason's like yeah, that full face hood. That's pretty. That's pretty banging. Um, but he just left the hood. <laughs> like I'm like you can't you, you the, the the full face hood looks dorky. That that. The pointed, the pointed hood over it, just yeah. the black, the full black face, you know, just, just completely yeah. dark, completely in shadows, and then the hood over it, and of course, you know, brilliantly, usually they have it as kind of magenta, but I would, I would see it as like a darker sort of just past royal purple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Loving it's that. It's a great costume. Yeah. It's a great costume. And then pockets everywhere. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> belt. You like well, I think she has a belt, but like, and also... Belt and pockets. Yes, it's like it's like, and, and I mean, this was like in the the nineties, even I think. I'm just like, this is before. Oh, that's a cute dress. Yes, and it has pockets. Exactly. Like, it's a cool superhero awesome. costume. Yes, stuff. and it has pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like when when they when they introduce Damien. And full disclosure, I haven't read very much of the Damien stuff at all. I haven't read Batman comic like the regular monthly Batman comics for years and years and years and years. So. I'm fully, I'm I'm fully willing to accept the possibility that a lot of the Damien stories may be terrific. I just haven't read them, um, and I feel like just as a concept, it just feels redundant. It's like why are we giving him another Robin when there was a perfectly fine Robin right there, who was a, who was not only a great Robin in terms of his interactions with Batman, but was a terrific character in his own right. And and had his own book for years that for a lot of years was was one of the best, if not the best, Batman book in in the in the nineties when when uh, when they first, when when Robin when Tim's Robin had his own solo title there, there were many many months yeah that was, it was, I, where it was the best of the mainstream Batman books. The thing is, it's possible to tell a good story even with a crappy character, and that's that's what I would say to the fact that maybe there are good Damon stories. So what? He's he's a crappy character who shouldn't exist. There you go. So cross him off the list. Um, but yeah, um, I as far as which character, my favorite Robin. Um, I don't know. It's it's between Dick and Tim. Yeah. Oh yeah, me too. Um, and and some of that, unfortunately, I think I think Jason could have been a much better Robin, but was poorly written because essentially they wanted this this character is not Dick Grayson. And that's what he got stuck with. He got stuck with uh, J- Jason Todd deserved so much better writing early on and he didn't get it. 
then they tried to fix it with the death of the family and that just you know they fringed him it's hard to fringe yeah, a dude yeah. character but i mean they they totally did i mean his his death was absolutely you know not about him it was about batman and then 100%. and then oh god and then not having dick involved i mean you know significantly I'm, that should have been huge for dick grayson and like not so much um, same thing with the killing joke dick should have been heavily involved in that i agree and then not yeah. so yeah there were there's i mean i guess i guess when whenever you have uh you know storytelling that's gone on for that long you're gonna have some some clunkers even in good stories otherwise good stories um i really don't think death in the family is a good story honestly the the concepts you know the, the idea that that robin could die it makes a lot of sense but the way it played out with like oh the joker and the ayatollah teaming up and God, just, yeah it's really ah, yeah bad it's really goofy i mean i i like it here's the thing i I, rem I remember Death in the Family fondly because... I, it's I, got some great art. It, the, the Jim, Jim Aparo did the yes. penciling, and Jim Aparo mm -hmm. is my favorite Batman. All, all due respect to the great artists who made this guy. Jim Aparo is my favorite Batman artist. Um, and, he, you know, he, the, the artwork in it is beautiful. And we also get to see not only Jim Aparo's Batman and Robin and Joker, but also Superman, because mm -hmm. Superman's in it. And I, I, I like the idea of the Joker killing Robin and then Batman saying, okay, that's it. <laughs> I'm taking him out. You know, I don't know if the story necessarily earns that, but the idea of the Batman, concept does. The conce yeah, the concept of, of the Joker murdering Robin and then Batman saying, all right, that's it. I'm taking him out. No more of this. And then Superman being the one to pull him back. You See, know? and that, that's, that's my problem. It shouldn't have been. You should have been Dick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, obviously, obviously. I mean, just just the, the fact that I say I say that, and you're just like you know exactly because that's like how is how how was that not just how, how did they how did they miss that how? Well, I, I, they, they probably wanted it. You know, it would be a more a more. Oh, they wanted book. to pull Superman in, so it's like oh look, Superman's in the story. It's a t it's a, instead of a suit and yeah, instead of a Batman Nightwing story it would be a superman batman team up and they could be like you know because i think they you know they did the 800 number and they did the gimmick of hey vote and see if he survives or not so they knew that they wanted it to be a big event like a best-selling yeah. book and they figured we'll throw superman in there too so um, do you remember do you remember um the so like you know but bef back in the day children before there were memes there were like things went viral on email yes and I remember um, one of them was the, the top 10 things that uh, make Dick Grayson cry. Oh, I faintly remember this. You know that? I think one of them was that Sitka the elephant never really liked him. <laughs> That's but the one. last one, the number one thing was, um, was a poem. Oh? Yeah, you don't remember that one? I don't remember. Please share the poem, please. Roses are red, violets are blue. That 800 number was meant for you. Because, <laughs> I mean, that's, that, that's why it got so much press, because it was yeah. because they thought they were killing off Dick Grayson. Right. <sighs> Poor Jason. Poor Jason. Yeah, yeah. Just, oh. Well, you know, you, you mentioned it a minute ago about how Jason was a victim of bad writing. I mean, he was, he, he was sort of the first... I don't know if he was the first, but he was an early victim of sort of the wrath of the fandom and, and, and of how impossible certain fans are to please because, mm -hmm. because when they decided to, to allow Dick to grow up and mm -hmm. leave Batman and become his own person, and then they replaced him with a new Robin, initially the knock on Jason was that he was just a clone of Dick. Right. So then after Crisis, when they said, let's... Let's take this let's opportunity. Make him not Dick. Yeah, let's take this opportunity to change his character. Yeah, then they complained that he wasn't enough like Dick or that he was too different. So it's like, oh, so you're just not going to be happy with anything. No, 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 no. I think they had a legitimate gripe there because what they did was like, let's like make him edgy 
and like punk and like you know a little street top like they didn't actually give him a it wasn't just about giving him a different origin story or, or you know and, and making him just not like dick they like made him the anti-dick and i think people were just like that's just shitty storytelling folks i mean that's just bad i mean you know the the, the whole stealing the tires off the batmobile yeah. i'm just like no that's just that's terrible storytelling i i think the fans have a legitimate gripe there um, and some in, in that sense, that's a legitimate gripe. The, the the oh he's he's not you know he's not Dick Grayson is a stupid complaint. No, he's not. Okay, suck it up. Animated Tim is basically a smoothed out version of Jason, because Animated Tim has Jason's origin oh, story. I was not aware of that. Yeah, and and animated series and the uh, yeah the new adventures of Batman. No, 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 no. I was I was thinking more like the Titan stuff. Oh, the Titan stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, I, just, I don't I don't know I don't know Robin's origin for for the you know Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go and all that stuff. Yeah, I, well, see, I haven't watched any of that, so I don't know. Isn't is it is isn't it Dick in those though? Isn't Dick Robin in those? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but and it's hard and, to and, that's, and and you know what? And that's sad. Like literally, I can't tell them apart in in the more modern, uh, the more recent animated stuff. I can't tell which one's which. And you can't tell by the costume because they give everybody Tim's costume now. Yeah, because it's the best one. Because it is a great. I, I, that's something else I wanted to make sure I mentioned. I want to make it absolutely clear. In case you, you said it earlier, but you know, you edit these things and not just that Tim's costume is the best costume because I, I know I said that. I think Tim's costume is the best redesign of a classic costume that I've ever seen. Because you know that became like a thing in the '90s too, where they would update the costumes. Yeah. And Tim's, because it's such a drastic change, it's definitely not the Elf Boots costume at all. Right. But, it, but it's obviously inspired by that and based yes. on that. And it's 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 such a great, and I think it was Norm Brayfogle who designed it, um, who was the first to draw the Tim Robin. And uh, it's just beautiful. I mean, it's such an awesome costume. It's way cooler than any of the costumes that Robin has had since. Um, and of course, it's the basis for you know, the animated series costume and the costume that, Titans. that, that Titans, oh, in the, in the, in the live action Titans show, it's based, except for the fact that he has long sleeves, like it's the Tim costume. I mean, oh yeah, a, but uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I am, I am in love with the finger stripes costume for Nightwing. Oh yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, if we're count, but I mean, that, yeah, but that's not necessarily a redesign of a classic costume because I don't know if Nightwing had a classic costume before oh, that. Had a classic costume. He had the Elvis collar. It's a great redesign. Let me tell you, it is such an improvement <laughs> over that sucker. He had the Elvis costume, and then he had there was the costume that he had with like the 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 gold chest stripe in the nineties. Mm -hmm. That I think is a pretty that's a pretty cool costume. I didn't mind that costume, but the yeah the but the the and then and then let, let's not forget God when they gave him that rat tail. Oh yeah, that I didn't care for that. Yeah, I mean they just wanted something. They're they're like we want more swirly lines around. Let's give them a ponytail. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that. But uh, let, me tell, let me tell you, folks, as someone with long hair, it doesn't work that way. You gotta braid it to get it to work that way. And so, you know how long it takes to braid long hair. So Dick, <laughs> Dick hears like a police siren, and he's like, "This looks like a job for Nightwing." Hang on, let me. And then, like, you know, an hour later, he's like, all right, I'm ready to go. Got the hair braided. It's not an hour, but, you know, it's probably a good, like, 10 minutes just for the braid. He would be good at it by that point. He would be yeah, able to just exactly. really just snap it off. Just be like, do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Yeah. No, you go, you go down first, and then you pull it over the shoulder so that you can just okay. have it right. Otherwise, do, 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 otherwise do, 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 you, get, you get, like, a crimp in your shoulders. You play, you play it like oh. a clarinet. <laughs> uh, hang on. Just don't, don't, don't kill the people you're mugging yet. Clarinet isn't over here. Clarinet's here. Oh, work with me. Work <laughs> with me it, here. Okay, an oboe, an oboe, because the oboe has the reed over here. Yes. So, okay. Yes, that's what. No, 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 no. Bassoon. Bassoon. Oboe, bassoon. oboe is this way as well. Yeah. Or bassoon. Whatever. Because God, give me but something. But they're both double reeds. Give me. They're both double reeds. You know it's what? It's okay. It's okay. I, I, I know. You, you can't even sight read music. I can't. Can we? Can we? Um... I, well, for, I, you know, we never really talked about this. We, we sort of, we've been discussing it. What did we uh, miss? Well, no, I mean, I want to ask you before we close, before we end the video. I mean, do you agree with me? Do you think, do you, do you think Batman is better with Robin? Yes. Now, we, we, we phrased the title of, that, of the video to be um, 
more a little bit more you know edgy does batman need robin yeah um and i think not um i'm looking forward to you know in in the story that we write together seeing how you know what happens when we write early batman where there's no robin and you know how you know how he develops in his character and that that sort of thing and the introduction of robin how that works i'm really interested to see how those stories play out when we decide to tell them um so no i don't think batman needs robin but absolutely yes i think batman is better not just in stories where Robin exists, but in solo Batman stories where there is a Robin in universe, I think that affects Batman's character in a way that makes him more interesting. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, there, yeah, there are, there are great Batman stories where there is no Robin, like Batman Year One, one of the great Batman stories, no Robin. Um, Perpetual Mourning from Batman Black and White, number one that we've mentioned a couple of times, mm -hmm. one of the most beautiful amazing batman stories ever written no robin um, and yet and yet you can you can tell i mean the 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 gentleness that you see there i would yeah. say that that's a function of having robin exist in that universe like robin is there but he's just not in that story yeah yes robin robin is, he's not like he's not there necessarily even in spirit but you can see the effect of robin on batman in that story yeah well and, and i would argue also because and I think in all of those black and white stories, unless it is explicitly indicated otherwise, those are sort of the Batman in those stories is sort of like just the default Batman, not necessarily yeah. belonging to any particular continuity. Just it's kind of just generic default Batman, like the platonic ideal of Batman. And and to me, I think that Batman has a Robin. You know, whether it's Dick or Jason or Tim or Damien or whoever. That Batman has a Robin. That is an essential part of the character. And when I, 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 I really, I really, um, like I said, I'm really excited about looking at the early Batman. Pre well, me, me, me too. Because, but see, for me, it's because, again, unless there is a specific reason for him to not have Robin, which is for me, in my case, is mostly because it's before Robin's there. So, like what we're yes. talking about, writing early Batman stories. Like when I, when I have an idea for a Batman story. Robin is always there. I mean, part of part of coming up with the story and building the story and, and framing the plot is always what's Robin doing? Like what's Robin's part in the story? Because <laughs> because when I write Batman, Robin is always there. And and you know, it, it, or it, why is he not? Or yeah, if he's not there, why is he not there? Yeah, what's is, is this before he's part of the, the story? Or is he off somewhere else doing something? Or is there? Yeah, I mean, Robin is always there. Like I, I just I don't I, I don't connect with the 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 impulse to do Batman completely without Robin. Like if we're writing early Batman, it's with the understanding that Robin's not there yet. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. because Robin is always there. And that's again, as much as I enjoy the, the, the Christopher Nolan movies, I feel like that's it's a shame that, you know, we've never gotten like a proper it's a well, I mean, yeah, it's it's just no, something no, missing. That it's just something's missing. It's just I it's don't. A missed I, opportunity. I don't know if Robin could have. I, I, I don't know if Robin could have fit into the Dark Knight. I don't know if there was room for him in that movie. But I mean, in general, like, it's just a missed opportunity to not have Robin and to not have a proper version of Robin in the movies. All due respect to the the fantastic accomplishments of Chris O'Donnell. Um. In Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, like you know, a but kid. anyway, a kid, a kid, and and then and then after at that point, if you make a whole bunch of movies over a period of years and we get to see him grow up, so much the better. But yeah, start and I mean, out as a kid. You, have, you have evidence that it can be done with the MCU. Absolutely, absolutely. Although, although I will say, you know, he's you know, uh, uh, the MCU Spider Man is older than you know starting out robin would be that's Should. true that's true yeah he's like 15 or 16 when he when he becomes super spider-man and i would you know yeah and i think i think that's how we've written um dick as like 12 12 ish yeah when he starts yeah yeah so. actually you know i mean in our fanfic our ages are a lot younger than and in our timeline that we've worked out like i i, I think well you uh, have to start younger because there's so many of them my true. god i know but like i think we have we have dick becoming nightwing like when he's like 18 or something i think yeah i think it's younger than that even seven maybe 17 
Like I think so because yeah. because the 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 fist of the face story is like he's. 16 he's 16 that's right that's right so i mean our, our version our characters are even and younger so, than so they typically joins, so that, that, that's when he leaves and joins the titans but he joins the titans as robin so it is a little bit younger than that so he's 17 18 but he's yeah. not he's not uh he's not robin for long with the titans right right but yeah i'm thinking 17 ish when he becomes Nightwing. he's a very young nightwing yeah, yeah. which i'm cool with yeah I'm cool. So. i like nightwing better anyway than robin or is that just I like I like Dick. I'll say I like Dick better as Nightwing. That's actually I think night the, the existence of Nightwing is one of the reasons why Dick is my favorite character because Dick is Dick is the the character that was allowed to grow up. Yeah. And yeah. And, and I, I mean that 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 changed that changed comics. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. And and it just it it made him more interesting. It opened up more possibilities for telling stories. It made Batman more interesting because now you're acknowledging the passage of time. Um, yeah, and, and, and like literally that that then flooded out into you know comics as a whole. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like, wait a minute. So does that mean if if Dick is older now, that means Batman's older now too? So how mm -hmm. old was Batman? Because it never used to matter because everybody was always the same age. Yeah, it was. Like, it was. Yeah. So how old was he when he started? How old is he now? Are they going to yeah. keep? Are they going to keep aging him? How long is he? Is there going to be a point where Batman just not? He's too old to be bad. Like it, 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 it yeah. forces you to think about stuff that you never thought about before because they never aged anybody. Yeah. You know. So yeah. Thanks, Robin. Um, I think that's it. I think we have. I think well, if, if we have not exhausted the subject, I'm sure you'll tell us in the comments. That's, that's true. Have we exhausted the subject, or better yet? Have Did we, we miss anything? Have we beaten this subject to death with a crowbar? <laughs> I would say call the eight hundred number, but we ain't put one. Up. We ain't putting up the money. No, we ain't gonna be doing it. No, just leave. Yeah, tell us in the comments. What do you think? Who and the uh, people watching, leave us a comment. Tell us who's your favorite Robin. Do and you, why? And why? And if it's Damien, explain yourself. Please. Um, <laughs> and and you know some of your favorite Robin stories, favorite Robin moments. Do you do you disagree with us? Do you think that Batman is better without Robin? Explain explain why you have explain yourself. Explain why you have adopted this obviously incorrect opinion. <laughs> anyway, Dana, thank you as always for. I, I, it is one of the great joys to to sit down and talk Batman with you. Thank you for your. It's fun. Your I'm gonna go play with the cats. <laughs> okay, traitor. Hey, they're, they're, look, she's so soft and fluffy. Come on, man. I think even Bat, even Batman likes cats, obviously. Eh? You know Maybe it's a future video. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time, everybody. Take care. Bye.